What is up guys, it's the Sound Alchemist, and today I'm back to bring you 40 facts on the Warhammer 40k universe. Now this episode will be dealing with the Krut. If you don't know who the Krut are, they are a Xenos race that have allied with the Chao Empire, and they're kind of like uh, an indigenous version of a predator from like the Alien franchise, and they look pretty cool. Uh, they're very focused on close combat, at least on the battlefield they are. And the reason why I'm talking about the Krut today is because in the past couple of weeks we've been getting a lot of questions about their uh, shaping ability. So their shaping ability is an adaptive feature that allows the Krut to gain traits from the meat of the enemies that they eat. So for example, if they eat a lot of orc meat, they'll get bulkier and more aggressive. So there's a bunch of questions as to how does this work, what can they eat, what can't they eat, and exactly what makes this uh, possible. Now one of the questions that we got was what would happen if the Krut ate the Emperor's uh, meat, or the Emperor for that matter. And uh, I'll get to that answer at the end of this video, but for now let's find out what shaping is and what actually it has to do with the Krut. So here are 40 facts on the Krut and their shaping ability. The Krut is a very unique Xeno species because it has a feature that they evolve by absorbing the traits of other species, a process accomplished by eating flesh. Due to this, the many Krut warbands across the galaxy often look radically different from one another. The Krut Shaper is the leader of a Krut clan, and they generally have the best ability for recognizing desirable traits in defeated foes, and they tell their kindred, or the Krut clan, as to what to eat in order to suit the task at hand. Normal Shapers guide certain adaptations in some Krut kindred, while other Shapers work with a Shaper Council, which oversees the development and guides the Krut's gene matrix. For example, a Shaper who wants his Krut to gain muscle mass will take on campaigns against orcs to acquire the correct DNA, while extensive feeding on flying predators will allow the Krut to grow wings. This devouring of the enemy ties in with their religious beliefs. They believe that when a warrior of any race dies, his warrior spirit should be kept, and the only way to do this is by eating their flesh. The Krut practice this in their burial customs in which the body of the deceased is consumed by their kindred. Krut who prey extensively on a particular species will begin to take on characteristics of that creature. In sentient species, such as orcs and humans, they may also take on the cultural aspects of that race as well. Krut who have fed on Dark Eldar, for example, soon begin to show signs of the cunning and intense cruelty that the Dark Eldar are known for. The Krut digestive system is very powerful and extremely efficient. It is capable of breaking down almost any organic material into an energy form that can be stored in specialized organs scattered throughout their bodies. These organs are called nymes. Now should anything inorganic and indigestible be consumed, the Krut must regurgitate it with considerable discomfort. However, the strangest quirk of Krut digestion is their ability to extract potentially useful strands of their food's DNA. The Adeptus Mechanicus genators have been aware that much of the double helix structure of their DNA is in fact blank and used to separate those areas containing genetic information. The Krut have somehow inherited the ability to incorporate useful DNA codes into their own genetic makeup. The process is not an exact science, and there are many examples where it has gone awful, leaving some trapped in an evolutionary cul-de-sac. For example, the Krutox and the Krut Hounds. At some point in their evolutionary history, both of these subspecies of Krut fed upon creatures that were possessed of traits that they wished to take on, but in doing so, atrophied their intelligence. The Krutox are now much larger and stronger, but became lumbering creatures, more akin to forest-dwelling herbivores than their smaller, more intelligent kin. The Krut hounds became faster and leaner, but like the Krutox, their intelligence was also reduced, becoming little more than vicious predators. Now the Krut use these variants of themselves as laborers, pack animals, mounts, and even weapons, especially the gargantuan Narlock. 
There are many more variations of Kroot. For example, you have the smaller Flying Kroot Hawk and the Serpentine Kroot Worm, as well as more terrifying dastard creatures. Deep within the forests of Pack, there exists beasts that were once Kroot, but have since descended to hideous evolutionary paths to become monsters that feed on their own kind. Such places have become cursed, and only the bravest or most foolhardly Kroot will ever venture within these haunted depths. Now, there are also some species that Kroot will stay away from, and those are the Tyranids. Kroot have been forbidden to eat Tyranids because the Shapers have declared them inedible because the Shapers have inherently been repulsed by the Tyranids' particular way of changing their genetic makeup. Humans who worship Chaos are also on the off list, for they tend to have some interesting capabilities imbued with them, all due to the chaotic nature of the warp. And lastly, the Tau. Due to their role in saving the Crute's homeworld of Peck from the Orcs, Consuming Tau flesh is a crime that brings swift and deadly retribution from the Shapers. Crute are also able to taste the taint of meat of the gene stealer hybrids, even if the mutations are not visible, and therefore will not eat any gene stealer cults. They are also unable to effectively shape the living metal of the Necrons, and in doing so, it produces hideous effects as were demonstrated during Kara. Karak was a crude world of the Tau Empire, where the Necron Sauktek dynasty invaded the planet. The Kroot did win their first engagements, and in doing so, attempted to eat the living metal of their victims. However, a nanoscare of plague swept through their ranks and killed off many of these Kroot, and thus they were forever forbidden to eat the Necron flesh. Another notable encounter between the Kroot variations was when the Silver Skulls of the Adeptus Astartes encountered Kroot that had assimilated DNA from the Eldar, and thus gained powerful psychic powers, which allowed them to cover themselves in an illusionary disguise that hid their true nature, appearing instead as dark, midnight blue creatures with smooth skin, long sinewy limbs, clawed fingers, and large purple eyes, set comparably small on their elongated faces that came to a triangular point with two nostril slits at the end. They also had no visible ears and a mouth full of double set of razor sharp teeth. This psychic disguise was only ruptured when their cerebral connection was broken, as such when their head was severed, after which they would revert back to their true crude form. They also displayed the ability to generate multiple psychic illusions of themselves in battle, which appeared to their enemies as completely corporeal and capable of causing harm. However, these illusions were extremely vulnerable to psychic attacks and would dispel back into thin air when hit by one. The Silver Skull is recognized that the group with these psychic powers posed a grave threat to the Imperium and they recommended the planet where they were encountered to be cleansed of any and all crews. And now this leads us to the question that uh, I was asked by you guys in For the Greater Wall, and that was, what would happen if the Kroots came in contact with the Emperor's flesh and began eating it? So, like we heard, if they do eat Eldar flesh, they gain awesome, powerful psychic powers, but I believe that since the Emperor is so psychically powerful that perhaps eating his flesh will end in the Kroot's destruction. Um, I feel like it's any part of the Emperor is so powerful, be it living, half dead, or dead in itself, it's just gonna like, it's gonna cause too much power inside of a crew and they'll just explode. Now in the off chance that this doesn't happen, then we are in for a awesomely powerful crew. Um, you saw what can happen just by eating Eldar flesh. And when you get the flesh of a man who's been created by 1,000 powerful shamans, they're, they're going to be almost as powerful as like the old ones. Which may be how we can actually bring the old ones back through the use of crew eating the emperor's flesh. Which that's another theory for another day, but that is where I will end this awesome crew lore. So again guys, what do you guys think about the crew? Um, I've played them a few times. Uh, pretty much, well, I guess I play tested them. I never actually got the models. 
Um, and they're pretty good. They're they're not they're not that bad. But again, I feel like they they contrast to the Tau's uh, advanced technological mechy selves. So I don't know how I feel about playing them. Uh, as always, I do like playing Farsight in a heavily suited army. So I feel like the Kroot would be a, too much of a contrast, too much of a different thing there. But who knows, I might try them out later on. Uh, the models do look pretty cool, and uh, lore-wise, they're really awesome. Out of all the uh, species in the Tau Empire, these are probably my favorite. And then after that is the Talarins, which is the Dog Warriors. And uh, I don't really like Vespids. <laughs> but what do you guys think about these Kroot? If you guys have any other questions about their traits, their shaper abilities, leave them down below. If you guys want to see the Groot mix with another race or eat another race, what race would you want them to ingest? Perhaps the Herod? And then maybe they can get some like Chrono powers. I don't know. Leave it all down in the comments down below, guys. And don't forget to leave your suggestions there as well. And we might get those in the next 40 Fact video. Again, guys, this has been the Sound Alchemist, and I'm part of One Mind Syndicate, and I'll catch you tomorrow. Oh, <laughs>